After finishing the bones of the thoracic limb, let us now discuss the comparative features of the bones of the pelvic limb. The bones of the pelvic limb includes the os coxae or the hip bone, the femur or the bone of the thigh, the tibia and fibula forming the bones of the leg, the tarsals, metatarsals, and digital bones. In contrast with the thoracic limb, there is a true joint joining the pelvic limb with the trunk. This is because of the sacroiliac joint between the sacrum and the ilium of the pelvic bone. The coxofemoral joint is an articulation between the acetabulum of the os coxae and the round head of the femur. The knee is a compound joint formed between the distal end of the femur with the tibia and by the femur with the patella, the largest sesamoid bone. The stifle is another compound joint between the leg bones and the tarsal bones and the articulation within the tarsus itself. Just like in the thoracic limb, the metatarsophalangeal joint is the fetlock, the proximal interphalangeal joint is the pastern, and the distal interphalangeal joint is the coffin joint. Let us now begin comparing the bones of the pelvic limb on the next slides. The hip bone or the os coxae is composed of the ilium, ischium, and pubis. There is a lot of ways to identify the hip bones of a specific animal like the size and shape of the os coxae. Anatomically, we can compare the hip bones by identifying the orientation of the gluteal surface and the number of the gluteal line at that particular gluteal surface. In cattle and in horse, the gluteal surface is facing dorsally. In pigs and in dogs, the gluteal surface is facing laterally. In terms of the gluteal line, please bear in mind that there are three gluteal lines in carnivores and one gluteal line in the rest of the domestic animals. The bird's pelvic bone is comparatively different from its mammalian counterpart. It is also composed of the ilium, ischium, and pubis. The ilium is the biggest and is divided into preacetabular ilium and the postacetabular ilium. The naming was based on the location of the acetabulum. There are two openings as shown here. The smaller is the obturator foramen, which is the same in mammals, and the bigger is the ischioischiatic foramen between the ilium and the ischium. This foramen transmits the sciatic nerve. The pubis is long as you can see here and separated from the ischium by the ischiopubic fenestra. Next, we compare the bone of the thigh or the femur. Note that this is not the actual size of the bone relative to the size of the femur of other animal. In dogs and cats, the femur is cylindrical and the femoral head is at the same level with the greater trochanter. In pigs, the greater trochanter is also at the same level with the head and the shaft is distinctly quadrilateral in appearance. This is in contrast with the cattle and horse, with the greater trochanter being higher than the head of the femur. To differentiate the femur of a cattle from a horse, Please take note the presence of the third trochanter in horse and the absence of the said structure in cattle. The femur of birds is almost the same with the mammalian counterpart. Its head articulates with the acetabulum of the os coxae. Birds also have the patella at the distal end of the femur. With regards to the bones of the leg, we can compare them based on the degree of fusion of the tibia and the fibula. In carnivores like dogs and cats, the fibula are not fused with the tibia. The fibula is also as long as the tibia. In ruminants, as represented by cattle here, the fibula is vestigial and there is no interosseous space. The lateral malleolus articulates separately and the malleolar bone is present. Here is a schematic illustration of the ruminant tibia and fibula to see the malleolar bone. In the horse, only the proximal half of the fibula remains which includes the head and the proximal shaft. The lateral malleolus of the fibula is fused with the tibia. In pigs, the tibia and fibula are not fused same with the carnivores. 
The ulna is also at the same length as with the tibia. The part of the chicken limb where the tibia and fibula is located is frequently referred to as the drumstick. The fibula is thin and splint-like while the tibia is fused with the proximal row of the tarsal bone forming the tibiotarsus. The bone is characterized by a proximal bony projection called nemial crest for the attachment of the main extensor muscles of the knee joint. Unlike other long bones of the birds, the femur and the tibiotarsus are good source of bone marrow. As a review, like the carpal bones in the thoracic limb, the tarsal bones are arranged into proximal and distal rows but with the addition of a center row in between the two. The proximal row is composed of the tibial tarsal bone or talus and the fibular tarsal bone or the calcaneus. The distal row is composed of the first, second, third, and fourth tarsal bones. In between the two rows is the central tarsal bone. In total, there are seven tarsal bones. This pattern is present in pigs as well as in dogs as you can see here. Modifications can be observed at the distal row in larger animals like horse and in cattle. In the horse, the first and second tarsal bones are fused thus they only have six tarsal bones. In ruminants, the central tarsal bone fused with the fourth tarsal bone forming the centroquartal bone. In addition, the second and third tarsal bones are fused. In total, Ruminants have only 5 tarsal bones. For the remaining bones of the pelvic limb like the metatarsals and the digital bones, the pattern is the same as in the thoracic limb of horse and in pig. In carnivores, the first metatarsal bone is even more reduced than in the front limb and the first digit or the juclo is often absent. In ruminants, the fifth metatarsal bone is absent. A metatarsal sesamoid bone is present and is often called as the small metatarsal or the metatarsal 2 bone. In birds, the central tarsal bone and the distal tarsal bone fused with the metatarsal 2, 3, and 4 forming the tarsometatarsal bone. This means that there is no individual tarsal bone in birds. The first metatarsal bone remains a separate structure while the fifth metatarsal bone is missing. The tarsometatarsus bears a bony process for the spur which is more developed in males than in females. Distally, the tarsometatarsus articulates with the phalanges of the digits. Please take note of the following pattern. Digit 1 bears 2 phalanges. Digit 2 bears 3 phalanges. Digit 3 bears 4 phalanges and digit 4 bears 5 phalanges. And that concludes our discussion on the comparative features of the bones of the pelvic limb of the different domestic animals. You can proceed now to the last part of this module which will briefly discuss the splanchnic bones.